Hello and welcome to this video for Excel chapter 2 hands-on exercise number 3. We're on page 516, your textbook 516, and we're going to be learning um, of course some new functions today. So the VLOOKUP function, we're going to use the PMT function, and then the IF function. So um, we're going to be doing those on page 516. So uh, I'm going to read the information while you're turning there. It says use the VLOOKUP function. Rates vary based on the number of years to pay off the loan. And so Erica created a lookup table for three common mortgage years, so house payments, and she entered the current APR. The lookup table will provide efficiency later when rates change. So you can use the lookup function, or VLOOKUP function, excuse me, to display the correct rate for each customer based on the number of years of the respective loans. And of course you can refer to figure 2.26 as we're working on this. Step A, we're saving it with a new name. So I'm going to click File, Save As, and I'm going to save it to my folder. You can save it to where it needs to go. And we're just changing it from hands-on exercise number 2 to number 3 because we're working on number 3. Once I've done that, I'm on step B. It says click the Payment Info Worksheet tab. So down here, Payment Info Worksheet tab. Remember, each one of these is a worksheet, and here's the tabs for them. Then it says, um, well, let me zoom in here a bit for you so you can see it better. Then it says click and sell G9. So right under APR, G9. And it says to click the Formulas tab. So Formulas tab. And we're going to choose lookup and reference right here. Lookup and reference and V lookup. So I actually go down to the bottom of the list. V lookup. I'm going to click on that. And of course, you see all these different things come up here. It says ensure that the insertion point is in the lookup value box, in which it is. And it says click the collapse dialog box. So my button's over here for that. Then it says click cell F9. So right now I'm in G9, I'm going to click F9, that's years 25, and it puts it in the box for us, so semi-selection, and then we're going to click expand. So I click on this cell first, F, F9, and I'm going to click on the expand button here, and now F9 is in my lookup value box. Then it says press tab. When I push tab, it goes to the table array box. I'm going to click collapse dialog box again, and then I'm going to select the range D4, through E6. So D4, I'm going to move this here so you can see it. So right under years, D4, or excuse me, right under years, D4, there you go, 15 through E6. So I'm selecting this information right here, D4 through E6. Then I'm going to click expand the dialog box again. So you notice we're getting different things here to make it properly work. So this is the range that contains the data for the lookup table. So we have the lookup value is from F9, so 25 years. And then we're looking for it in between D4 through E6. So that's what it means by table array. Okay. It says do not select the column labels for the range. So you notice I switched after I accidentally selected the label. Then it says step F, press F4 to make the range references absolute. So I push F4. And I also need to change, and notice it only changed the E6 one. I need to change this one. So I move my insertion point to D4, and then I push F4. So it needs to look like this before you go on to step G. All right, then it says press tab. And then it says type 2 in the column index number box. So 2. And of course, the second column on the ta or excuse me, the second column of the lookup table contains the rates that you want to return and display in the cells containing the formula. So the second column, hence column index number two. Then it says push tab. So this is step H. We're now in range lookup box, and we're going to type in the word false. False. So this is to ensure an exact match to the lookup in the table. You enter false in the optional argument. So it needs to be an exact match or it's false. All right, then after we've entered all this information here, and of course you can see it gives an explanation. It looks for a value in the leftmost column of a table and then returns a value in the same row from a column you specify. So 
hence column 2. By default, the table must be sorted in ascending order. And range lookup is a logical value to find the closest match in the first column sorted in ascending order. True or omitted, and you find an exact match equals false. OK, so we're going to click OK. And you can see it brings up 3.625 um, there. It says a copy the formula down, so this is step J. I'm going to double click on the fill handle right here, and it copies it down um, that column. And of course, step K is save the workbook. So we did step one using the VLOOKUP function. Now we're on step two, next page here, use the PMT function. The worksheet now has all the necessary data for you to collect the monthly payment for each loan, which you can see right here, monthly payment. The APR, the number of years for the loan, and the number of payments per uh, periods in one year and the initial loan amount, you will use the PMT function to calculate the monthly payment, which includes payback, or excuse me, paying back the principal amount with interest. This calculation does not include escrow amounts, such as property taxes or insurance. So that's more house things, but um, we're going to be focused on the other things here with it. It says click cell H9. So under monthly payment cell H9, that's step A. Step B, it says click financial in the function library. So I clicked on cell H9. I'm going up here to the function library and clicking financial. Once I click financial, it says select PMT. So I'm going to go down. It's usually alphabetized. So here's PMT in the P section. And I'm going to click that, PMT. Now you can see this function box comes up again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the rate box, this is step C, G9 divided by B5. So G9 divided by B5. And it says press F4 to make the reference to cell B5 absolute. So I push F4, it adds those dollar signs to show me it's an absolute one. Then I press tab, and it says I'm going to type in the n per box F9 multiplied by absolute B absolute 5. So F9 multiplied by absolute B absolute 5. And then it says push tab. And the PV box, we're going to type in minus D9. So minus D9. And then it says to click OK. So of course, this calculates a payment for a loan based on constant payments and a constant interest rate. I'm going to click OK. It puts in my info there for me, which looks correct. And it says to copy, of course, the formula down the column after I push OK. So I'm going to move my mouse to the fill handle, double click, and it copies it. And it looks correct according to figure 2.27. All right, it says save the workbook for step H. And now we're on step number three. Step number three, it says um, lenders often want to borrow. We're going to use the if function. Lenders often want to borrow or want borrowers to have a 20% down payment. If borrowers do not put in 20% of the cost of the house as a down payment, they pay a private mortgage insurance fee. PMI serves to protect lenders from absorbing loss if the borrower defaults on the loan. That means they can't pay it. And it enables borrowers with less cash to secure a loan. So the PMI fee is about 0.38% of the amount financed, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're buying a house and it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars, it adds up. Some borrowers have to pay PMI for a few months or years until the balance owed is less than 80% of the appraised value. The worksheet contains the necessary values in the input area. And you use the if function to determine which borrowers must pay PMI and how much will pay, uh, they will pay. And of course, referring to figure 2.28. So step A, it says click cell I9. So that's under my monthly PMI. Then it says, step B, click logical in the function library. So function library, logical right here, and select if. So if. Then here's my more uh, function arguments dialog box. In the logic test box, I'm going to type in E9 greater than equals dollar sign B dollar sign 7. So of course, dollar sign meaning absolute. The logical test compares the down payment percentage 
to see if the customer's down payment is at least 20%. So the threshold is stored in B7 of the amount financed, and the customer's percentage cell reference is relative, so that will change when you copy it down the column. However, cell B7 must be absolute because it contains a value that should remain constant when the formula is copied to other cells. So step D, it says press tab. So we're going to the value of true box and typing in zero. So zero, and that was step D. Now we're on step uh, E, but before we get there, if the customer makes a down payment that is at least 20% of the purchase price, the customer does not pay PMI. So a value of zero will display whenever the logical test is true. The first customer paid 20% of the purchase price, so he or she does not have to pay PMI. Then it says press tab and type D9 multiplied by absolute B absolute 6 divided by absolute B absolute 5. I'm going to double check and make sure I typed in the right thing. Um, and that is correct. If the logical test is false, so if it's true, we put down a 0. If it's false, uh, the customer customer, of course, must pay the PMI, which is calculated by multiplying, you can see that, the amount financed, D9, by the periodic PMI rate, so the result of dividing the yearly PMI, B6, by the number of payments per year, B5. So that's how they come up with that. Then step F, it says click OK. So I click OK. You can see they didn't owe anything there with the first one, so it's a zero. And then I have to copy the formula down the column. I'm going to refer to figure 2.2 eight to make sure it's correct and it looks like my information is correct then it says step G set the worksheets to print on one page and add a footer with your name on the left sheet code in the middle of course the file name on the right so um, I'm going to click on the page layout tab and then I'm going to choose here uh, to well we're not going to do that I'm going to get my dialog box here so page setup dialog box launcher um, and I'm choosing header and footer I'm gonna choose custom footer remember footer at the bottom of it the left section it says we are typing in your name so center section is putting in the sheet code so this is the file name this is the sheet name so right here sheet name and then the right section is going and putting in uh, the file name code which is right here so I have those three things for my footer so let's click OK and then I click print preview and then making sure it's printing on one page so this one it looks like it is printing on one page so I'm good to go I can push back I'm gonna save the file and of course I can close it and then submit it um, there and that, of course, is how you finish Excel Chapter 2 Hands-On Exercise Number 3.